What's up guys, Shane here from Fugitag 3D Printing and today we're checking out the longer orange 10 resin 3D printer. Welcome back guys. So this is the orange 10. This is an MSLA, a masked SLA resin 3D printer from a company called Longer. They're newer into the resin printing and printing in general, I believe, uh, but they're just trying to make their market more in the US. I don't know if they were Chinese only or what they were. But anyways, this is their resin printer. And before I start unboxing this, you guys are gonna go flash to the future and you're gonna go ahead and see how the prints are. And then if you're interested, you can come back here and watch this unboxing, which shouldn't take me too long, but We'll try it and see how it goes. So I'll see you guys in a second. So before you guys finish watching my unboxing, let's talk about my first experiences with this printer. Now, building the enclosure first uh, kind of sucks. And I wish there was a way to glue it. I mean, I'm gonna look into gluing it somehow, but I'm not really liking how janky it is. It did come apart a few times on me while I was building it. Uh, it's not really, I mean, it's stable, but not really. You kind of have to be really careful when you pick it up and down. Not a huge fan of that, but that kind of just is what it is at this point. It uses two rubber bands. I just put the third spare one around the middle just to be able to kind of make sure that it stayed together. Uh, I want to talk about a few of my gripes with this printer right off the bat. Now, this is probably, if not the cheapest, the second cheapest SLA printer on the market right now. So I believe it's 195 on Amazon. So that's really, I mean, that's as cheap as so half the FDM printers that I'm, I'm using here. But it's, it definitely shows, if I compare it to the, well, the Mars is what, 300 now, but was down to 250. So let's say at the 250 mark, it's about $60 or less, give or take. It really shows where the differences in that are. So you don't have a ball head screw up top, you have just this, just a thumb screw that kind of clamps on there. But let me show you this. In order to get this off, you loosen the thumb screw and then you have to try and pull it. That's loose. That is how much force it takes to get this off. What in the world? It is so hard to do that with rubber gloves on and a print on this build plate. It is just stupid, to be honest. Now, what's being causing it is the four screws that you'd use for leveling. So there's two on each side. Those squeeze this together, which make this smaller. And because you're squeezing this, that's where it goes in, in the printer. It slots into that. And pushing in isn't so bad, but getting it off is, I mean, it's, it's freaking hard. Ugh. It is so freaking hard to get this build plate off. It's not even funny. So I guess maybe I'll try and squeeze this with a pair of pliers or file it down. Might be the best thing. But because it's so hard to get it off, I actually had black flakes show up in the vat. So I had to kind of scoop those out um, with a paper towel to get those flakes off because the powder coating was coming off on it. That's not okay. I mean, that is a huge issue with this printer. Now, the, the vat isn't so bad. Uh, it, it, I would like it to have guides to make it or like a stop in the back just so you don't push too far, but I mean, it's, it's easy enough. You have access to the entire top, just like the Mars. These thumb screws are also really, really long, but the vat's okay. I mean, it is, it's metal construction, uh, you can see there is a seam here in the back that they did weld over, but you can definitely see the seam from the outside there. And it's just pinched together from the top with different sets of screws. You can see there. And that's what kind of holds that in there. Okay, that's not so bad. Now the noise is ridiculous. This gets super loud or do a little quick test here. So I'm going to turn it on. Let's just boot it up. I think you can hear that. That's how loud it is, just, just turning this on. Now that will go down, but when you're printing, that's how loud that fan is. 
it's definitely the loudest one. Now, is that a big deal? Not really. I mean, no one buys these 3D printers, especially cheaper ones, so that they're super quiet. You spend more money on drivers or diff better fans. There, there's no perfect printer out there right now. I mean, the Prusa Mark III is the closest thing you're gonna get to that, or if you build your own. But off the shelf, there's no other printer that's perfect, that's super quiet, anything like that. But compared to the Mars and the Photon, the other two uh, MSLA printers that I have, this is by far the loudest, except for, I mean, my Photon mod makes it louder, but regardless, stock out of the box, this is the loudest. So those are my biggest gripes with the machine itself. None of them are really deal breakers, but that is just how I feel about the printer and using it for the past two days. Now let's talk about some of the prints. So I printed the four files that were on the SD card, and I wanna talk about them a little bit. The first one I printed was the Zombie Hunter head, and they actually did a really good job at pre-slicing these. They have holes in the bottom, and they have a drainage hole on the side at the bottom of it as well to really let air circulate through, because if you only have one drainage hole, um, it's really hard to drain anything out because air has to go in for the liquid to come out. There has to be a displacement. So that they put the holes on the bottom and the side, it drains extremely fast. So you can just fill this up with some uh, isopropyl alcohol, swish it around, you can hear it swish around in there, and then dip it over, it pours right out, it's great. This model is pretty good. I mean, for in 3D printing, is it a good model? Yes. For a MSLA printer, is it good? Not really. Uh, you can definitely see Z-banding going down the print. You can also see a little bit of layer shift or maybe it's just a little bit of, it can't so call it under extrusion, but you can definitely see some lines that are not perfect. I mean, I this, the, this type of print on the Photon and the Mars come out beautifully. This, you can definitely see the layer lines in it. Maybe it's just the way it's pre-sliced. I'm judging this 100% on the pre-sliced models that they sent with the printer, which should be like the best it can do. And your job when you get a 3D printer is try to replicate those amazing files. It's not the case. So Zombie Hunter, I was not really that uh, happy with. Next, I did the little Stormtrooper mask, and I left the supports on here just so you could see it. These are all being cured already, but you can definitely see layer lines in it, and in the back, it actually didn't adhere properly to itself. So there, there was some peeling away from part of the model, which is never good. So that is definitely just flat out a failed model. Didn't really work out that well, but that's what it is. Then I did this, uh, I think this was the Vampire Lord or whatever it was on the SD card, and he came out pretty good. But on the back, you can definitely see the resolution, you can definitely see the different layer lines, you can see some shifting in there, so there's definitely problems. And this was a quite a large model. It's very cool, actually. Again, left the supports, everything on it. They also did a great job of having a drainage port on the side, the two drain ports on the bottom. It's very easy to clean it out. So they did some good things with this, but again, test model, not that great. And then this is a huge model, and this is solid. This model is so heavy. These are the three skulls, um, speak here and see no evil skulls. Um, it's solid. I don't know why they had this one solid. It should have been hollowed out in my opinion, but maybe just because it's very detailed. But it's, I mean, it's a good, I mean, it's a lot of weight. It, I, don't, I don't have my scale up here, but it's a lot of weight. This one turned out not bad. I mean, I would say of all of them, this is by far the best one. It was also the longest. I think this took eight hours to print. Um, you can see some of the layer lines on like, which is funny, on like the bottom, so when it prints the bottom skull, but the other two are really good, all the way to the tip, really good. Uh, there is a few holes in it. I can see one hole up top here, uh, a few areas where the resin didn't fully adhere to the layer that was just previously had cured, so it has some peeling effect going on there. But overall, it's not a bad model. It's definitely the best that came off of this, but it's still not living up to the quality that a lot of the other cheap MSLA printers are producing. I used about 
a little more than half of the bottle. Again, this is a 250 milliliter bottle, very small one. I use a little more than half of it to print out these four test models. So I do think that there's some room for improvement on this printer. I do look forward to slicing my own files and putting on here and see if these issues will remain using my own settings on it. And I'll have to get into the group and see what other people are doing. If they're having other issues, I'll try this with some other resin. I'll finish this one up but I have about four or five other different brands of resin I will try in this printer and just see what I can do, see if I can modify this a little bit or look online if anybody else has that problem with this kind of sticking so badly. I didn't notice that as an issue in, in uh, I know Joel did a video on this, I didn't see him have that. I think a few other YouTubers have done videos on it. I didn't notice that, but I didn't really watch carefully on their videos, so I'll kind of go back and look at those. But either way, I kind of just want you guys to know what my first experiences were with this printer and what you might expect if you decide to pick this up. Now again, price real quick. This is over $100 cheaper than the cheapest MSLA printer, which is the Mars. The Eligu Mars is right now $299 on Amazon. This is $195. Uh, I think there is, what's it called, the Snap Maker or Spark Maker. You can get on eBay for $180 to $150 but that is a smaller build volume than this one, I believe. So again, I'm not sure, I haven't tried that one out, but for me, this is the absolute cheapest one on the market that you can get. So you can kind of get started with something like this maybe. I don't know, it's, it's hard to tell. It's kind of a mixed bag. I like the price point, but the results, you might as well just spend the extra 100 bucks and get a better printer. 100 seems like a lot of money, but again, I need to do some more testing to see what's going on with this. So that's my initial impressions on this machine, guys. I hope you'll continue watching the video to see my unboxing or the full unboxing of this printer. But if you decide not, we're gonna sign off right here and I won't have to do it in the future. Well, in the past, because I didn't do it, so I'm gonna do it now. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. Thumbs down if you didn't like it, but either way, I wanna hear from you guys in the comments what you guys think about this printer, or if you have it and you're having success or problems, please say that down below in the comments so other people can read what's going on. If you guys wanna stay tuned to what's going on, make sure you become a subscriber. If you wanna help out financially, there's a bunch of affiliate links and Patreon down below. You can check all that out in the video description. There also will be an affiliate link for this printer on several different vendors if you can decide to buy it. So please using those, again, really helps out the channel. Thank you guys for watching. Continue watching, I guess, yeah, continue watching, and happy printing, see you guys later. All right, so I've got my unboxing knife here. Which I bought this just for fun, but you know, hey, why not? So it's a very small box, I can say that at least. All right, so we've got a book up top. We've got some extra FEP material in here. The FEP is what goes on the bottom of the build, uh, the build tray that's in there. And we've got two branded 3M uh, paint filters here. This is what you use to clean the resin. So I would have mined a few cheapo ones just to kind of get people started, but that's all right. And then we've got parts. So we have the power supply, a desk spatula, so a micro SD card, USB, some gloves, masks, Allen wrenches, some gum bands, rubber bands, sorry for everybody else, power cable, part of the build platform, Ooh, ah. ah, a uh, 250 milliliter bottle of resin and this is light brown and then yeah i forgot about this one so this one you have to assemble their uh cover which i find rather interesting okay so there's one piece of foam come on uh, and there's the printer very small all right, so right up top they have a Facebook QR code to their Facebook group. And you can see it's a very different uh, build plate as it actually is metal. Where the, other one, the other ones are metal, but they're like cast aluminum, where this is sandwiched aluminum. Pull this off here. Oh, okay, those don't stay in. Okay. And there's that. Well, that is interesting. They do have the LCD already masked down with some type of tape. So that's different. 
and this build plate is definitely different, or the vat, I should say, is definitely different. There's no, like, all the other printers that I've tested have, like, a slot for those to kind of go into. This does not have that at all. But I can just screw these back in. This definitely seems to be more of a budget one, which, I mean, the price does kind of uh, say that as well. If you look underneath, we've got a big cooling fan blowing on their sensor. So there's some inch, uh, info about it. Orange 10 is 12 volts, 60 watts. The printing size is 98 by 55 by 144 millimeters. Uh, this is made in Shenzhen, with, along with all the other ones. Power switch and the actual power there, which the power plug doesn't actually like fit in there properly. <laughs> and I would say a big gripe already is it's a micro SD card slot. That's a bummer. So I like the other, I have the Photon and the Mars already, and those use a USB which is pretty fantastic because USBs are easy. You plug them in, you go. This, you gotta worry about the adapter and all that jazz, and I'm not a fan of that. So, I guess the first thing we need to do, and yeah, looking here at it, towards everything that came in it, is we need to assemble the acrylic cover, and you use these rubber bands to hold it together. So that also is very different. Uh, some playing cards for some reason. Oh. That's the whole build plate. This tiny thing. Wow, this is way smaller than those other printers. My guess is that the cards are to clean out the vat or to clean this off. Maybe they're just because they're disposable, just playing cards. I don't know. But let's put this away and let's go ahead and assemble the cover. All right, so there's the super janky cover. I'm gonna go ahead and put, they gave you a spare one. For now, I'm just gonna put this all around the middle because I don't trust this thing at all to stay together, not one bit. I'm gonna go ahead and super glue this at a later date or pick up some acrylic glue and uh, do that maybe, I don't know. But it is kind of janky. It just fits over like that. The only thing holding it in its place are two screws in the back because uh, it kind of hits the, the build uh, plate there in the middle of the vat. So that's it. So now all I need to do is add on the build plate and start printing with this. So I'm going to do that and you guys will see all of that already. Uh, I'm not going to go through the leveling because there's probably videos out there for that or I can do it another time. But that's basically the unboxing and taking a look at this. So uh, that's that. So thanks guys for watching this far. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.